This game has been primed as one of the most unique FPS titles that we've seen in a while. However, the blend of that uniqueness mixed in with the community and updates has fizzled out a lot of that excitement. Today we're going to be diving deep into a topic that hits really close to home for a lot of us, and that is, what's happening with the finals? And I actually think I have the perfect answer. Rewinding back to the end of 2023, the finals is everywhere. Players are dying to get back in after finishing the open beta, and, well, the game overall was expected to contest the big five. The game at the time only had three maps, which was Monaco, Seoul, and then Skyway Stadium, but players didn't really care about that. The adrenaline of spawning in, blowing up any building, stealing a cash out was just all new fantasy unlocking something players have been craving for years to finally arrive. The trailer releases, people are interested, and the popularity on this game skyrockets. Of course, at this time there was already small criticisms from the closed betas, but it was nowhere near as sounding as what we currently have now. Players were curious. This is a free-to-play game and obviously it's not going to be for everyone, so we would expect the popularity to dip after that initial hype phase is over. So in order to actually answer to you guys what's happening with the finals, let's first of all actually go over what makes an FPS game fun. Well, first of all, let's start off with the obvious. The visual and audio aspects have to be on par and at their highest standards. Even in today's world, the style of art is criticised. I mean, let's take Valorant for example, where people were essentially calling it a mobile looking game when it was first teased in 2020. We know Riot Games' art style, but that doesn't stop the criticism of players across that realm. I think we can all agree that the finals is very good in this area. Visually, the game looks beautiful, and the audio, after some updates, is in a pretty damn nice place. Pairing along with this, we all know Embark's selling point of the game is destruction. In the early days, across every single article that I could find, everyone always mentioned about the destruction, and yeah, obviously, you know, you could tie this aspect into technical, but just looking at a damn building collapsing from something you did as a player is huge, and it really gives that kind of battlefield nostalgia back. Now the next is, of course, progression. Why should you keep playing the game? What should you even work towards? And I'll admit, this area is something that I felt Embark have missed the mark on massively. When I first launched the game in the alpha, I came under the assumption that your character or contestant would start off as kind of like a nobody, right? Someone who's maybe perceived as an underdog in the realm of the finals, and it's essentially up to you, the player, to build your fame. I really thought that this would be a secret leverage that Embark had, which kind of set it apart from that classic play to unlock weapon system in games such as Battlefield and Call of Duty. Imagine this, as you're slowly building your fame, you get messages from sponsors in the game to play under maybe their brand. Um, for example, you might be given contracts similar to what we have now, where you could basically come to a dilemma where you have to choose who you'd want to represent in the game and then be given rewards for completing those contracts even some for let's say wearing the branding so you kind of feel like in the arena you're being backed by an organization backed by a team something to represent i mean think about sponsor battles for example being able to fight against each other in let's say cash out rewards for money you know like let's say ospoos versus volpe for example is a really damn fun idea as your fame grows in the arena, maybe you would, let's say, hear a louder crowd when announcing your team, maybe even displaying something about you as a player on the boards across the arena. Of course, team dynamics and roles in FPS games are obviously crucial as well. Why should you work together as a team in the first place? Now, it's factual that games which allow you as a player to choose roles that fit your playstyle obviously enhance team play, right? You know, you could have snipers. Uh, medics, uh, assaults as, you know, simple common examples across all games. At the same time, if you want to chill out in a non-competitive environment, then you should be allowed to do so. You don't always have to use the most optimal setup. I will say though that team communication is obviously vital for team play to be achieved, but let's be real. Most of us FPS players are pretty damn introverted. It's not every single day that I would want to be using voice comms. So to replace that, we'd obviously need, first of all, an intuitive ping system. And then second of all, a text chat. 
even outside the scope of a competitive or casual game environment. I mean, sometimes you might want to tell your teammate after getting an elimination onto me, for example, you know, look how trash this washed YouTuber is. Um, or, you know, what the hell was that? You know, when you, you kind of see like a random ass bug happen in the game, you know, moments like these add to the experience and, you know, especially sharing it with people on your team. Even to compare into this game, I think the ping system does need an overhaul. Um, you know, take Apex Legends as an example of a great system they have without it being too invasive to the user's UI, which I'll talk about in a part two of what specific changes I want to see in the game, so stay tuned for that. Now, one of the biggest controversies that I know you've been waiting on me to talk about, especially if you're a returning viewer, is the anti-cheat system. This is in theory one of the biggest drivers why players stick to or quit playing. When I, you know, look into playing a game for the first time, it's literally top of my list to check on, you know, how the cheating is in the game. If most of the time I hear that it's a pretty negative experience, I won't even bother in touching the game. In all honesty, this isn't directly impacted though to Embark Studios or, you know, the finals. You know, cheating around the world is rampant right now in gaming, taking over even the biggest titans so far, for example, like Counter-Strike 2 and Apex Legends, and obviously for a longer time, but more notably, Escape from Tarkov. And let's be honest, the cheaters are winning the battles right now, and something really has to give, or some, I guess, evolution has to take place for those tables to be turned. A lot of the solutions come through, for example, like the face it anti-cheat, where players like pro players uneven confident in playing the games in their own in-house matchmaking systems, they go and turn to third-party solutions to be able to fix that issue for them. I want to mention that obviously I think cheat developers, you know, do expose vulnerabilities in their game's code that obviously game developers can patch up. But unfortunately, you know, they don't do it for the good. And I think that the players that buy the cheats and use them don't really understand what the future will hold in FPS games if things stay the way they do. Now, you obviously know that I can't change these players' mentality, obviously, so, you know, why would they listen to me? But really, I think that if nothing changes, this entire FPS genre will die. Fix, well, why, why do people cheat in the first place, you could ask me. <laughs> Honestly, I, I do think that a huge chunk of it actually boils down to ego. We've kind of grown up in an Instagram, TikTok world where everything is perfect. Everyone's eating healthily, right? People, people are going to the gym on uh, on January 1st every year and really I do think this kind of feeds into the mentality of not losing. We're shown constant clips of streamers and creators all the time with cherry-picked clips of them popping off in our algorithms and we kind of compare ourselves and we expect ourselves to be just like them in every single game and if we're not then you know either we will think that we're a failure there's cheaters or the game is just bad overall. No one likes the concept of challenge anymore or being told hey you're just not good. It's a mixture of time and ego. Players that cheat save time because they progress faster and they save ego because even if they're cheating and they clutch a 1v3, they still have this crazy feedback loop in their brain that goes, hey, that was pretty nuts. Good job. You can't do anything about it. I mean, how does Valve, worth an estimated $8 billion overall, struggle with cheaters in Counter-Strike 2? The point is, it's just the reality in gaming that we have right now. Now, you could say to me or point me towards someone else that would say, well, Thix, all Mbok have to do is just read their stats, and if they're getting a 90% headshot rate with no deaths and 40 kills a match, just simply ban them. Sure, and that's obviously a solution, and I think the Mbok are actually doing that. Maybe the trigger would happen eventually after like two or three games or so. Remember, the, the, the point is this is a free-to-play game, right? So they can just simply make a new account and they're probably not even hardware ID banned. So you might have just played against them on a new account and they're playing on their second game. Maybe the next game afterwards they get banned. And it's not even the obvious cheaters that I'm worried about. It's when Embark will basically face what I like to call legit cheaters who will kind of learn to hide this so well and it will completely decimate the public competitive scene. All right, here we go. So balancing is another massive controversy in this game. And no matter what I say, most of you will probably still hate me. Now, I want to say, please just at least respect me for the fact that I could easily take free wins from all of you as a viewer, which, by the way, if you're still watching, maybe a, a little bit of a like at least. But, you know, I could easily, you know, research on Google or Reddit or Discord, whatever, what the most popular opinion is for the game right now. Take that opinion for a video for brownie points so you all consider me as smarter and, you know, I get maybe more views and subs, whatever. I'll give you guys my honest perspective and I've done that since day one. I'm not afraid to call out Embark when I believe that they have done something that's not towards the best intention and that they could improve on, but it's always constructive criticism. I give the reasons why behind my points. I do think that the topic of balancing is actually a mixture of a few things here. And one of the biggest ones, I think, is that we as a player base 
don't see what mboxy are we inclined to you know know what the data is even visually on how much stronger a light heavy medium contestant or even a gadget is so that they have to nerf it personally i, I think we are we have preferences and sometimes there isn't really an in-depth explanation as to why mbark make these decisions I don't remember anyone asking for a range extension on the stun gun, for example, but it just suddenly happened. Now, I will admit they have improved on this as they are starting to, in patch notes, include dev notes just below it. But really, sometimes these notes don't explain enough. We need a bigger perspective or a bigger idea. What do you see, Embark, which has made you make that decision? Was it purely just from reading comments on Reddit and Discord? Or was it something to do with data-driven insights that you guys have understood that could make the game improve for the better? They also sometimes adjust weapons, like in Otter's video, talking about the LH1 recoil buff, without the community even knowing about it in the patch notes. So I really think that about 30% of this problem literally lies down to communication. I used to be able to, you know, essentially understand the direction that Embark were taking the game. For example, if they were going to nerf heavy or make some adjustments to heavy, then I'd understand, hey, they wanted the game to be less about turtling. They wanted it to be less about the shield, heal, and health meta. The next point about the balancing changes is that I actually think it comes back around to the ego talk that I mentioned earlier, where obviously I do agree that a chunk of things Embark have adjusted have actually been positive, but I feel like most of the anger or complaining comes from the source of the player base. And I know that I sound like I'm being a shill here for Embark, but honestly, I'm not. What I'm actually saying is, is that it's a mix of both the players for complaining and Embark for not standing their ground, which has basically put the game in this really weird spot. Now, this is about to lead into another topic, and I'm about to say a really big quote here, and it's very short, it's very simple, but this game was never made around being a competitive game, but sells that dream to players through its universe. So I've been talking about when the honeymoon phases out many times in my videos, and if you watch my closed beta 2 review, everything I've ultimately said is a concern we're actually facing towards this today. It's no one's fault that you or me perceive this game as a competitive one because it being a game show FPS where competition is literally the main focus of the world, right? Reach the finals. Can you reach the finals? Asking that question is a competitive question in itself. They are challenging you. Can you get to this point of the game? I think what's happening is that we kind of have this tug of war community now where it's impossible to make everyone happy. And, you know, sure, that's in most games. But when you're Embark trying to grow your game and, you know, update it and cater to everyone, you get this really weird spot where players that were maybe starting off by learning mechanics or builds or strategies now have to completely use something else. Imagine if you're a brand new player coming back into this game or, you know, returning after some period of time. You go and have a certain build that you're happy with and all of a sudden Embark completely obliterate parts of that build. Big titles can actually get away with this because they've been established for years and usually they don't make changes every single week. So, you know, the players of these big games are pretty damn loyal. But when you're in what I would say is the growth phase of the game, we have no identity anymore of a playstyle because it just keeps changing each week. Sure, I get it, the shush meta was taxing, but we're now in a period of time where Embark will literally tug between now catering every single player base and the data that they have. Embark aren't trying to make a bad game. You as a player are just putting so much pressure on these devs who pour their soul every single week to rotate towards your idea of how the game should be, which might even go against their entire vision. And I promise you, it's not Embark wanting to kill the game. They're being forced to. In a fantasy world where everyone had unlimited time, I literally promise you, get Embark to make a limited time mode with their entire vision on how everything should be balanced. Wipe everything out across the entire board. Remake how everything is working in the balance system. Make that a limited time mode, and I bet everyone will have a way better time than what we have now. Now, I want to stress that we're obviously all allowed opinions, okay? You know, I have opinions each week sometimes on the game, but that doesn't mean that I need to get my opinion fed into the game. I'll just work around what I'm presented with, and that's what I enjoy. Sure, Embark, if, if you feel something isn't good in the game, change it if it's going to improve the game for the better, but you need to make sure that players can still adapt when you make those changes with other options. When you keep taking away things for me to work around nerfing certain aspects of a game, what used to be helpful to counter XYZ for myself as a heavy main, for example, is no longer prevalent. I, I just, I honestly don't know what to do anymore. I literally had to take apart and reinvent my entire playstyle into something so out of reach than what I used to do. 
I don't mind that, but it, it's something that I enjoyed the game in the first place and, and, and found fun that I can no longer do now. Or there's something that's, that's just less fun that I have to use just to stay afloat in the game. And that's just the effects of nerfing everything. This isn't from the latest update, by the way. I actually think that there's positives to the changes, uh, in my opinion, because, you know, I'm allowed it. Um, should be that the cloak invisibility, that whole the drama behind it, I think that that was quite taxing with the amounts. Maybe change the amounts a little bit. But the cloak invisibility itself should be based on movement and range to balance out the mix. Like, sometimes I swear my game settings are bugged because I literally can't even see an invis light player on Horizon, for example, sometimes. Um, even if I hear them for a second, which is weird. But am I going to take that statement, scream it from the top of my lungs in YouTube or, you know, from Discord, Reddit, Pinterest, whatever you guys use, and, you know, say the game is trash and I'm going to quit the game? No, it's, it's just an opinion and I'm giving, you know, constructive reasons why behind it. How about some of you guys actually support these devs and be on their side for once? I've always said ever since my I'm Worried video, they changed my perspective on the future of this game. Yes, I want to see a competitive scene. An esports scene? No, we're, we're nowhere near that stage at the moment. And it's not even impressive at this point if you're hitting number one spots on the leaderboard because you're just being queued in with golds and silver players. No one cares if you're a top 10, top 100 or top 1000. And think about that for a second. That's actually a very big problem, right? Having that position, that should have some impressive value attached to it. But ranked is, such, is in such a mixed state right now. But again, I'm not being a yes man for Embark, you know, I'm, I'm being realistic on both sides. Let's just give a, an example from a different game, Valorant, for example, right? You know, you see all these pro players in-house playing in their own ranked games. They're not going over to face it. They're not, not even playing ranked in the first place. You know, these players are, are high up in Valorant on the ranked leaderboards because they're enjoying playing in a, what I think, I, I don't look too much at Valorant, but at the time, if not, but hopefully still to this day, a well-made and fought-out ranked mode is and can be. It's the same for the solo queue experience. There's no sense of community in this game. I've had players literally come to me to thank me for having such a small Discord community that they can play in a better environment. Sure, you know, obviously there's bad eggs and people you do deserve obviously a second chance, but we've literally had a period of time where me and my friends were answering support questions for the developers because they saw my server as a more official source over Reddit or Discord, and that's wild to me. We're a small community, and this is mostly our favorite game, okay? I mean, you probably care about the game just as much as me, which is why I do get, I understand the fact that I hear and see some of you guys being so emotional in your responses to players sometimes, or even just with your posts, but we really need to start changing up how we respect these damn developers, because honestly, right now let's let's think about it from a developer perspective they're feeling the pressure and demotivation right now more than ever we have the declines in player numbers and obviously this wild vocal feedback on social media i know some of these devs on a personal level and i literally hear and see how much this game means to them guys i mean remember they, they literally made this game if, if you want the, the fundamentals they made the finals as a gift to us away from that corporate greed away from treating players as customers they literally have the philosophy on treating their player base as gamers over treating them as customers what company does that in 2024? They've never asked or forced you to buy a battle pass just to stay afloat. I've never even been presented with like a, a, hey, buy this now. You know, you don't understand what type of world we live in right now and what we're going towards because we are in deep sh if this game dies. I can promise you that because if this game goes, I promise you, you'll soon be paying subscriptions to play certain modes on top of the fee to play the base game archive this quote it, it, it's coming in the future give the devs constructive criticism but also give logic behind it and maybe it doesn't even need to be spoken of not just because you got domed in a 1v3 scenario where you shouldn't win anyways or maybe you're just on your own as a player and you get stunned and then shot by a light like there's context behind these clips sure by the way i'm a competitive player and i used to thrash out a lot okay but then i kind of realized that this isn't esl1 cologne 2024 you're not a pro player no one cares about your kda if there's a bug, you know, that, that's fair to be upset. I want fairness in this game. It's impossible for Embark to sit down and come up with a model for millions and millions of plays that are made in the game and to point out inefficiency within those plays, okay? How about, you know, maybe you just made a mistake or, you know, maybe why should you care that you died? I was getting quite emotional, man, because like, it's been over a year that we're playing this game and I had to take a kind of a second, so I'm sorry. It's not just Embark, okay, that, that have to take a step back and actually think. 
Okay, it's all of us. You know, this game is, you know, currently not a competitive game. Yeah, we can make it competitive as a community. Okay, sure. And I hope that once they expand on those private lobbies, we'll kind of see this more as a community approach rather than this really weird tug of war going on right now. All of us have something in common. We all enjoy playing the finals. We all love the finals. And most of us want the finals to succeed. Why do you guys all fight against each other? Like, come on, guys. Like, I understand the people that are the, the bad eggs in the community and, and, you know, might be saying some, some certain bad things. Sure, I understand you might want to be going against them and, and backing up, you know, the community and the devs in that way and backing up us as a community. But... Guys, come on. Let, let's start thinking logically here about some of this stuff, okay? And to the Embark devs, you guys know that we have spoken uh, sometimes on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And you guys know that I have always said to you, what is the Embark way? That's all from me. My name has been Thix, and I'll see you on the podium.